Today we're in Carrara, Tuscany, Italy, famous for the marble that's quarried in the nearby mountains that Michelangelo used for his statue of David. But it's also home to the Italian Sea Group, which is the parent company of two well-known yacht brands, Admiral and Technomar. And I'm here today to take a look at its latest launch, the 65-meter Admiral Life Saga. The yacht is in the final fitting out stages before her official presentation at the Monaco Yacht Show in September. If the name Life Saga sounds familiar to yacht spotters, it's because the owner has another yacht of the same name, a 42-meter Heeson. But the new boat represents a significant step up, both in terms of size and because it's the owner's first new build project. Yeah, the owner's brief was pretty clear from the day one. He's always had uh, boats that have been second-hand and he's, and he's either refitted them or used them. He wanted, uh, not his adopted child, so to speak, but he wanted his own seed. So uh, the search began all, all over the place, really, we, even across the Atlantic. We looked into places there, um, northern Europe, lots of different yards we went to there. Norway was a, a close one, and then towards the end it became obvious that Admiral could could get us what we wanted, basically. The decision to build Life Saga here at Admiral was based on the Italian Sea Group's collaborative, owner-oriented approach. And given the subsequent changes to the original concept, it's difficult to see how Life Saga could have been built any other way. She's an important project for the shipyard as it seeks to actively engage with the market for yachts over 500 gross tonnes. And in fact, even before her launch, the management credited her with bringing in two contracts for two new 75 meter projects. I cantieri navali non sono pochi, né in Italia, né in Europa e nemmeno nel mondo. Bene o male, con le caratteristiche di ognuno di noi, tutti siamo in grado di costruire uno yacht. Bene, noi lo facciamo come lo fanno i nostri colleghi imprenditori, ma abbiamo aggiunto filosoficamente all'interno della costruzione della nave un concetto di lusso totale. Life Saga is based on Admiral Seaforce technical platform with exterior styling by Gianmarco Campanino. In many ways, she bears a resemblance to Oranos, a 50-meter Admiral launched in 2016. But at 1,150 gross tons, she's an altogether more imposing vessel. However, numerous adaptations and modifications were made to the original concept. The changes we made were uh, substantial from, uh, from the preliminary GA that we got. It was, it's, it's nothing like that anymore. They, they really changed everything that we asked them to to a certain level and then even, even after production started we added an elevator in which is the boss's request when he saw what he'd, he'd been getting. They moved the tender bay to where the, to where the, the um, engine room was and vice versa uh, on the upper level and that gave us the opportunity for our tender bay being right next to the spa. The main deck aft, this is one of the main areas that he, he's been using historically, um, so we decided early on to make it rather big, so we moved the, the watertight doors forward further than most, most boats and we put a sort of fake concertina door further aft just for privacy purposes and keeping the main salt out if underway. Another feature back here that we did laterally was to put in the the sliding glass windows at the side to just to increase the airflow around here. We realised when we're going to be at anchor it might be quite hot down here, so get some more air to go through. Okay, Chris, tell me about this table we're looking at. Uh, this is our capstan table built by Fletcher in the UK. Um, it's designed, as you'll see in a minute, to expand in from six cha uh, table chairs to 12, uh, which perfectly suits our indoor outdoor area here where we need that flexibility. Show me how it works. It's, it couldn't be more simple. Ta-da! Wow, look at that. It's amazing. 
One of the things that alerted me to the quality of Admiral when we first came here was the, the hinges. This is a standard hinge throughout, and I think they've been really My God, look at that, that's huge. <laughs> and this is just a fresh water outlet it yeah, is, yeah. for a hose pipe. They must, mustn't have had a smaller one. <laughs> yeah, to, uh, to cut the vibration down, which has been a big factor for the owner, uh, they made the engine beds very, very thick, and then they, instead of just tapering off into the keel where these usually go, with it, ours goes up, up and round and forms a ring around the whole engine room. So that and means that been, the whole noise and vibration is diffused throughout this structure? A basically. lot more, yeah, and there's ceramic um, insulation pads all around, uh, blocking out this whole, this whole en en engine room area. Let's just recap some of Life Saga's main specifications. She's 65 meters in length overall, with a beam of 10.6 meters. She's powered by twin cat main engines of 1500 kilowatts each. She has a top speed of 17 knots and a cruising speed of 14 knots. And at cruising speed, she has a range of 5,000 nautical miles. Three months after visiting Life Saga in the shipyard during construction, and just days after delivery to her owner, the yacht's here in Monaco just in time for the yacht show. And what a very different beach she is. Do you remember this fantastic capstan table when we saw the yacht in build? Well, now it's all finished, and we're gonna talk with the designer of the interior, British designer, Mark Berryman. First time we met the client, we were on board his previous boat, nice relaxed environment, and he said to me, he said, look, Mark, he said, I, what I want is I want something relaxed. He said, I want something that is calming, he said, and something that has got elements to it that are going to impress my friends, but in a very sort of laid back way. His main sort of uh, brief really was he loves transformable pieces of furniture and, and elements of surprise. The owner says the word optimization pretty much every day and transformers as well, he, that's two of the key things that we always do. He likes something that can do more than one function. Uh, he doesn't like furniture bolted down to anything, he wants to be able to move it around and play with it. And, and that's how we've done it. You won't see any fixed furniture anywhere, really. Um, the furniture that looks fixed isn't actually fixed, it's semi-fixed. So you'll see there's no borders around any of the teak, so it can be moved if and when we need to. He said, think of my interior like a cappuccino, which sort of wasn't quite sure where he was going with this. And he said, right. He said, so imagine a cappuccino. He said, you can picture it. I said, yes, I've, I've got the image of the cappuccino. He said, right. He said, so just add a little bit more milk in some areas and not so much in others. And it just sort of, it sort of gave me everything I needed. Our sort of trademark is we, we use a lot of, of oak. We, we love that as a background sort of material. It's, it's always about sort of the tactile element for us. So we tend not to go for sort of high gloss lacquers. We like the materials to speak for themselves and to be as natural as possible. And to emphasize that, we tend to sort of wire brush and sandblast them to bring the grain and the texture out. So using the, the sort of oak as the, as the backdrop, then it's playing with the various elements on board, the other timbers. So we have some darker, we have some wenge's, um, and then bringing in the leathers. He loves leather. He has a he has a real fascination with car interiors. He has some lovely cars and some fantastic sort of interiors in leather, and that was a bit of inspiration for him. It's 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 something he knows very well. We're in one of the, the lower deck guest cabins and, and one, of the, one of the themes that sort of runs throughout the boat uh, is this Japanese uh, sort of emblem really, circular motif that you can see here. Our design has a lot of straight lines and if you look at the rest of the sort of cabin, everything is sort of divided up and very clean lines and the, the circle just sort of breaks that, which adds a little bit of interest and it's, this is something that the, the owner had asked for very early on. I'd like an element that repeats throughout the boat that is not completely in your face and 
And if you don't notice it, then you don't know. But if you do notice it, then you're justified for being on my boat. These boats are, are you know, a, a space to, to sort of spend time where, as a holiday destination. And it should be a home from home and it should feel comfortable. And I want to be able to sit down on this sofa, kick my shoes off and stick my feet on the coffee table. That's, that's the important thing. The, the, the thing that I find difficult is there are some absolutely beautiful boats out there that are very embellished, very sort of opulent, but I'm nervous to sit on a sofa in case I crease it. And as soon as I come on board this boat, and I see the sea around me and I hear the waves, I'm, ju I'm just in my sort of right zone, it's, it's, it's great.